In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to fix a problem with a project that occurs near the cast on edge, whether you need to replace that section, lengthen it, or shorten it. If you'd like to jump right to a specific section of the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles of each section and their starting points. Or you can use the timestamped links down in the video description. This is a sleeve cuff that was originally cast on at this edge and knit in that direction. I needed to replace part of this cuff because it had gotten snagged a few times but also had been singed and was uh, coming apart and so I needed to save it. What I ended up doing was re-knitting this portion of the cuff starting from here and going down. So I've knit up some swatches in a light color yarn and I wanted to demonstrate for you different scenarios for how you might do this. Whether you are trying to fix something that's damaged or maybe you want to add length to a sleeve or some other item because it's not quite long enough or you might even want to shorten something. So I have a few swatches uh, to illustrate how this can be done. So this is a swatch that is imitating the sleeve that I just repaired. This is the, the cuff pattern and this represents the rest of the sleeve that was knit all the way up the arm. Um, here I have a swatch that is a garter stitch. And then here I have a swatch that has stockinette above here and then it has ribbing down here. So in order to fix an issue that is in your project near the cast on edge, what you're going to do is pick up a row of stitches on a needle while the fabric is still intact. Then you will remove the fabric below that needle and then you will have live stitches on the needle and then you will re-knit it in this direction. So it matters what kind of stitch pattern you're doing this in. You can do it in uh, stockinette stitch. You can pick up those stitches in stockinette stitch. You can pick up those stitches in this situation where I have bands of stockinette and bands of reverse stockinette. So you can pick up a row of knits along here. Um, and you can do it in something like garter stitch, which with respect to this face of the fabric is a row of knits on top of a row of pearls, on top of a row of knits, etc. So what these all have in common is that they all have a complete row that was worked identically, that all stitches were knit or all stitches were purled. What you cannot do is if you are in a situation where you knit your ribbing a little bit too short and you want to extend that ribbing to be longer, what you can't do is pick up the stitches at, at this point right here, like remove the cast on edge and just extend it in that direction. Um, and that is because the stitch pattern, when you knit in an opposite direction, uh, regardless of the kind of stitch pattern it is, it's going to be a half a stitch off from the way it presents in the fabric when it was knit in the other direction. You don't notice that in something like stockinette or garter stitch. And so you will only see that half stitch offset at the edge. With something like ribbing, you will see that every time you transition between a knit and a purl or a purl and a knit in a given row. So if you want to extend the ribbing of say a sweater cuff or a hat or something like that, you need to capture the stitches up here in the stockinette portion or at some place where there is a transition from one stitch pattern to another so that don't need to align with each other. Um, and then knit the entire cuff again down here. So if this were say an inch and a half and you needed it to be three inches, you would take out all of the ribbing and then knit the entire three inches or whatever length it was that you wanted. So I'm gonna show you in this example first because it's a big field of stockinette. 
What you want is, depending on how wide it is, if it's something narrow, like something that's only this wide, you could use a double pointed needle. And you wanna use something that's quite thin compared to what you use to actually knit the item. It makes it easier to weave the, the needle in through all of the stitches. If you're knitting something that's you know quite a bit wider than this, what you will want to use is a circular needle because that basically it, it's acting sort of like a needle and a thread and the stitches can sit on the cabled part of the circular needle. I could go in this first row right above the ribbing, but I'm just gonna go one row above that because I think it'll just be a little bit easier to get my needle in because this uh, pearl bump won't quite be in the way, but you could go right along that first row. So I can see I have a knit column here I can see the V's of those stitch and I have a column here. So selvage stitches always look a little different. So you have to kind of look more carefully at them. So I can see I have this selvage stitch has that kind of knot at the edge right here. I'm gonna capture that right leg and then this right leg. So I'm going to go and pick up every right leg of every knit stitch along this particular row. Now, if you don't have something to use as a landmark, like a transition to another a stitch pattern like this, if you are doing something like this in a huge span of stockinette stitches, at some point you might end up picking up a stitch on a row that's above there and you might end up um, getting off track. So one of the things that you can do is use a landmark. In this case, I have the landmark of the pearl bumps here and I could, and I want to pick up this uh, row of uh, stitches, the second row of stitches. So I could put a marker in that third row right here. I could put one every so often. If I don't have something like ribbing below this to help me figure out where I am, maybe I have a whole bunch of stockinette that I'm trying to get rid of and I want to eliminate. What I could do is count up from the cast on edge, however many rows um, that I need, uh, every so often just count up to make sure that I know where that landmark is along that row so that um, as I'm picking up stitches, if I get off track like this and I come to that marker and I see that I'm in the row where the marker is in, I know that I've made a mistake and I can pull the needle out to the previous marker. Uh, and so that allows me to do this in increments and be able to keep to know that I'm keeping on track um, as I'm doing this process. I picked up this stitch here that had the knot on it. Um, and when I got to this end, I saw that this selvage stitch had a knot on it. And I knew that one of those was wrong because you have a knot in the selvage stitch every other row and they're not at the same end of the same row. So I went back to this end and I took this, uh, took it out of here and I saw that what I really needed to do was pick up this one that doesn't have the knot. So that can be tricky with salvage stitches, trying to find exactly which one, but that's a way to check when you are working with flat fabric. If you are working in the round, when you start at the beginning of the round and you go all the way around, when you come to the end of the round, the stitch that you pick up at the end of the round is going to be a row higher. It's gonna look like it's a row higher than the beginning of the round. And that's because when you work in the round, you're actually working a spiral. So the end of the round is a row higher when you are working in the round because the beginning of the row following this one, that stitch is going to be right next to this one. So the beginning of the round always looks like it's a row below the beginning of the end of the round. With garter stitch, you have a row of knits alternating with a row of pearls. So what you wanna do along here is to capture whichever row is easier for you. So if it's easier, if it's easiest for you to pick up that stitch right above the pearl bump, like that, then 
then that's what you can you should pick up. You can you don't have to. You can pick up at the base of that this one right here. You can go and and pick up those along there. Either way uh, will work. It doesn't matter whichever way it works for you. But with garter stitch, it's pretty easy to keep on track because you'll know that you're always below that bump or you are always right above that bump, whichever one works for you. In the case of the fabric that I was replacing in my sleeve, I have three rows of stockinette alternating between with three rows of reverse stockinette. So for me, I thought it would be easiest to pick up in that middle row. It would just, I, I would be really easy to, to keep track of where I was if I picked up in that middle row there. So I originally had 16 stitches that I was working across and so I counted these stitches and I found that I had 16. Uh, what's going to happen when I take out the fabric is that one of those stitches is going to disappear. I'm gonna only have 15. So the way I take these out is I look at the row of stitches that's below the row that's on that needle and I take a pair of scissors very sharp and fine and I lift up the leg of one of those stitches like this and I pull it away to make sure that I'm not cutting anything that's on the needle and I snip it. Now for something short uh, you'd want to snip in the middle and then you pick out that row, that snipped row, you pick out toward the edges because you want to have a yarn tail that you can weave in later. If you are working something very wide, you can snip it at multiple places along the row, or you can just snip this yarn as you're pulling it out to make it shorter. As long as you are making sure that, that you do your last snip far enough away from the edge that you will end up with a yarn tail. So when you thread your double pointed needle through, sometimes you split one of the stitches that's in there and it can make it hard to pull the yarn out. So you just be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm coming to a pulling out the end here. And as we pull it out, remember I have uh, this threaded, threaded at this end through a stitch that was not, not the knot. And because of that, this is the stitch that ends up um, being lost at the end. The other end where, that I stuck through the knot is, will, um, will not have a yarn tail. That tail is going to be connected to down here. So you can see this is, this is the end where I was through the knot and at that end it becomes disconnected from the piece. But at this end where it was not a knot, that's uh, where I lose that 16th stitch. So now I am going to be working in the other direction. Now, I, again, I only have 15 stitches on here. If it's important to me that I have all 16 stitches, then I will need to add a stitch uh, at some point, either um, at the beginning or at the end of the row. And I can do that in a number of ways. I could just do a make one increase um, somewhere at the beginning or the end. Um, but if, I, if it's important for me to have all 16 stitches, I will need to increase a stitch in some way. If it's not important, if I'm just working in garter stitch or something like that, and it really doesn't matter that I have 16 stitches, I don't have to add it if I don't want to. So I can start working across. If I want knit two, purl two ribbing, then that's what I will um, uh, work in as I had originally, just be worked in the opposite direction.
You'll notice I'm knitting off the needle that I used to capture those stitches. These stitches already have their established size. There's no need for me to move this to the uh, needle that I'm knitting with, that needle size. I'll just put it to the side after I've completed this row. So I need to do a uh, knit two stitches. So I can either do a make one in between these existing stitches. I can technically pull this uh, tail over the needle and, and knit it, but there, there's not really a need to do that. I can just uh, create a uh, make one increase here. And, and what I meant by that was I could just have this over a needle like this and I can technically just knit that, but the t it's not secure. You'd have to hold it in place while you work the next row and it will stick out of the edge a little bit. In this case, I've just added that uh, extra stitch I needed in between two of the existing stitches here. Now, if I need a very specific number of rows of ribbing, let's say I needed 15 rows of ribbing all together, I would work 14 rows. And then as I was binding off, I'd be creating the 15th. Often it's not going to matter if, you're, if you have one row more or less, um, but that's if you need an exact number of stitches. So for my uh, sleeve cuff here, cuff here, I definitely wanted three rows of purl stitches and then have my bind off edge. So if I was going to use a standard bind off, I would have worked two rows. And then as I worked the third row, I would have done my bind off. If you want to use a type of sewn bind off, then you would actually work the exact number of rows you wanted and then work your sewn bind off. In the last section, I mentioned standard bind offs versus sewn bind offs. A standard bind off would be any bind off where you work the stitches off the left hand needle forming the final row of the fabric and then removing the stitches from the right hand needle to create the finished edge. A sewn bind off is a bind off in which you cut a long tail of yarn, thread it onto a yarn needle, and then pass the entire length of the yarn through each of the live stitches in order to finish the edge. This playlist over here includes videos of all three types of sewn bind offs. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.